Now, it's the Rupert Murdoch we've all heard about, but few have experienced. This is the News Corp boss, in his own words, speaking to journalists from The Sun, some of whom have been arrested by police investigating illegal payments to public officials. In the secret recording obtained by the investigative website Exaro, Murdoch rails against the police investigation into his company, accusing officers of incompetence. He calls the investigation a disgrace. He bangs his hands on a desk and urges the staff, just trust me, and for the first time he gives an indication of who might succeed him at the top of News Corp. Our Home Affairs correspondent Andy Davis has this exclusive report. Rupert Murdoch, the press baron so dominant in British public life for over 40 years, with a $35 billion media empire to his name, still nurses the wounds of that very public humiliation over the hacking scandal. This is the most humble day of my life. He has seen one of his British tabloids fold, another engulfed in allegations over corrupt payments. Humiliated and hauled before Parliament two years ago, Murdoch promised the stables would be swept clean. Invading people's privacy by listening to their voicemail is wrong. Paying police officers for information is wrong. This is why News International is cooperating fully with the police, whose job it is to see that justice is done. But does Mr Murdoch really have faith in the police delivering justice? Does he really stand by his assertion that paying police officers for information is so wrong? This is Rupert Murdoch, behind the scenes, as you've never heard him before. I mean, it's a disgrace. Here we are, two years later. Um, and um, the cops are totally incompetent. Well, I mean, the idea that the cops have to come in and kick you out of bed and your family's at six in the morning, it's unbelievable. Why are the police behaving in this way? It's the biggest inquiry ever. Well, well it's next to nothing. And now they're arresting their own who never even took money. That's a recording of Mr Murdoch in March this year speaking to a room full of journalists in the building behind me. Journalists from his beloved Sun newspaper and ones specifically, we understand, who've been arrested over allegations they were paying public officials, including police officers, for information. Not surprisingly, perhaps, some of them decided to secretly record the encounter. The fact that this meeting took place and some of the detail has already been revealed. But the recording offers a fascinating insight into Murdoch's attitude towards the police, towards the internal investigation he himself set up, and even into the enduring debate over who one day will succeed him. A beleaguered Murdoch had been into the sun a year earlier, pledging total commitment to his journalists. This time, he was echoing their disgust at the manner of the police arrests in the payments inquiry. This next clip starts, we're told, with the sound of Murdoch slapping the table. What they do, uh, what they did to you, and how they treated people. So, well, you know, a couple of you come home from a cup of tea and fall down. You guys got thrown out of bed by gangs and cops at 15 and 16. Uh, and I'm, I'm just sure. It would be nice to hit back when we can, one journalist suggests later in the meeting. We will, replies Murdoch, we will. Then tellingly, he singles out the police treatment of Rebecca Brooks, his erstwhile protégé, now facing multiple charges over the hacking scandal. The people who came and turned over um, uh, Rebecca on a Monday morning in a park. Uh, there were about 15 or 16. Uh, most of them, uh, a dozen, were from Manchester. They were murder squad or something. Yeah. And, and there were three local cops. From, and is that it? Throughout this recording, which lasts around 45 minutes, Rupert Murdoch repeatedly accuses the police of incompetence, of being unbelievably slow, he says at one point. At another, he can be heard saying of the police, I don't really trust anything they tell us. If he's contemptuous of the police, he shows remarkable disdain for the offence they're investigating. He belittles the corrupt payments issue, and for anyone convicted over it, the message is, he'll be there for them. I would do everything in my power to total support either get convicted get six months or whatever. You're all innocent. What happens if somebody is really guilty? Uh, I'm not allowed to promise you. Uh, I will promise you to have continued health support. All that, but um, the job comes out. But frankly, 
won't say it, but just trust me. What happens, ventures one hardy journalist, if you're not here to give us that support? There's polite laughter, and in the answer which follows, we get a very revealing glimpse into who might lead this company in Rupert Murdoch's absence. Lachlan Murdoch or Robert Thompson, Murdoch's chief executive at News Corp. Front runners now, it seems, in the great Murdoch succession debate and conspicuous by his absence any reference to James Murdoch, so long the heir apparent, so weakened over hacking. It's not only the police who incur the wrath of Murdoch, politicians are slated too. In terms reminiscent of the tone adopted by a young trailblazing Rupert Murdoch as he took on a somewhat sneering establishment all those years ago. We've been picked on, I think, but it was the old right wing establishment, Putnam or whether they'll have to get even proud of Gordon Brown. Um, there was a sort of got a cult with dirty hands, I guess, against the world, and um, everybody part of it. Uh, it was sort of get even time, but things that we've done with the sun over the last 40 years. For all Murdoch's protestations about victimization, the reality is it was his establishment of an internal management and standards committee which gave the police inquiries such momentum. A committee tasked to help the police retrieve evidence, yet seen by many of Murdoch's journalists as having gone too far, desperate to find scapegoats. Now Rupert Murdoch himself appears to regret such transparency. Why, he's asked in the meeting, did this committee hand the police mountains of documents connected to the journalists before him? Because it might have been a mistake, I think. Uh, but in that atmosphere at that time, he said, look, we are an open book. We will show you everything. Um, and uh, the lawyers just got rich, dead through millions. So has Mr Murdoch, crucially, withdrawn his company's full cooperation with the police? The Management and Standards Committee hasn't given the police any information for months, he says in the recording. His tone here, markedly belligerent. Well, I think for the last some, several months, uh, we have told, MSC has told, uh, to Said, no, no, no. Go to court or that. A spokesperson for News Corp this afternoon told Channel 4 News No other company has done as much to identify what went wrong, compensate the victims, and ensure the same mistakes do not happen again. The unprecedented cooperation granted by News Corp was agreed unanimously by senior management and the board, and the MSC continues to cooperate under the supervision of the courts. Rupert Murdoch has shown understandable empathy with the staff and families affected and will assume they are innocent until and unless proven guilty. Rupert Murdoch certainly expresses his sympathy for the journalist time and again during this recording, particularly towards the end after a letter's produced. It's written by a relative of one of the 23 Sun journalists arrested during the illegal payments inquiry. It's read out by the paper's agony aunt, Deirdre Sanders, who is herself not under arrest. So we've been left in a horrible limbo. Our relationships are at breaking point. Some of the kids who watch their dads dragged away are still in counselling. Characters have changed. There have been suicide attempts, all for what? A hideous political game for what end? To save news and international's integrity, but way before the well-being of its employees. Thank you, says Murdoch at the end, that's very moving. Adding, I'll go and shove it down the throat of the company lawyers. Defiant to the end. But this secret recording and its subsequent release amounts to a striking betrayal by one of his own. Inconceivable, arguably, in the days of old. And another public humiliation to follow the last. <laughs>